Dan Crenshaw, he's a tough guy, right? He's got an eye patch. We all know he's a super tough guy. He fought for our freedoms like the he First fought, Amendment. He fought for our freedoms like the First Amendment. He never tied. And somehow this guy can fit his military service into, I don't know, explaining why he shouldn't get paid a minimum wage or whatever. Um, I guess he did actually go into the military, but he just reeks of cosplay to me. And uh, check out his Facebook groups. Yeah, Facebook Administrator Dan Crenshaw. Check out Facebook Administrator Dan Crenshaw. But look, he doesn't like the snowflake culture. He went overseas to fight for our freedom. He's going to support the First Amendment in all scenarios, right? Yes, sir. My question is for Congressman Crenshaw. I, first of all, I want to thank you for your distinguished service to this country. Thank you. Uh, Congressman, just this year after a 2017 version of the law was blocked by a federal judge, Texas passed a law that still requires certain contractors to sign a pledge that they will not boycott Israel. The state of Florida has also passed a law outlawing the mere criticism of Israel. Representative Crenshaw, on May 9th of this year, similar legislation was even attempted at the federal level when the House Appropriations Committee sought to amend a routine government funding bill to allow federal agencies to compel contractors to promise not to boycott Israel as a requirement of maintaining their relationship with the U.S. government. Congressman, in spite of our unique and historic alliance, these laws are obvious, flagrant, and troubling violations of the First Amendment and free speech. Given that when you entered office, you swore to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, my question is this. Will you honor your oath and denounce these laws here, now, and forever, or do you agree with Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott that the First Amendment should only apply to Americans who support Israel? Yeah, it's impeccable. You're advocating for the First Amendment, or at least you're cloaking yourself in the First Amendment. I wouldn't presume my intentions. I, I wouldn't presume my intentions. I will. Because I know who you guys are. And I know that here's the problem with the BDS. When, when you create a movement, I'm not advocating for the BDS. And divest and sanction the one Jewish state just because they are the one Jewish state, there is a deep problem with that. That is anti-Semitism manifest. It's your right as an American. This is, I mean, look, obviously we all know the ways in which, you know, this guy, this guy's an absolutely dishonest scumbag, but it is incredible. I mean, it's not incredible. It's expected. But yes, there is a pure First Amendment argument on this. And if you took the First Amendment seriously, which I think I might more than a fair amount of other people. I think we both do more than Dan Crenshaw does. I, absolutely. It, by the way, would apply to even uh, obscene anti-Semitism uh, in terms of speech. It would. Now, I think uh, obviously when it comes to things like employment, stuff like that, of course, that's a different matter. But the second bigger point, and I think this lie that, you know, it's not just Dan Crenshaw, a ton of Democrats still repeat this, is becoming increasingly untenable. The state of Israel is not boycotted by people. I mean, look, sure, there's some, there's obviously there's anti-Semitism. The vast majority of people in the United States involved in this movement are because they oppose apartheid and they oppose uh, snipers uh, shooting unarmed protesters, nonviolently demonstrating in Gaza. This situation is observable and apparent to anybody. And if there is going to be no diplomatic pressure and no political pressure, what you do is you do other forms of pressure, just like against apartheid South Africa. So Dan Crenshaw's stupidity, dishonesty, and cynicism is expected, but you should look at the dishonesty, stupidity, uh, and, 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 uh, of this, and cynicism of this answer and ask yourself, how is this different from anything that Nancy Pelosi would say? And we didn't pull it. I forgot to add it, but Congressman Andy Levin, who's a you know good... A solid, I think, relatively moderate congressman 
who I'm going to assume he's from Michigan. He probably has a fair amount of Muslims in his district or he might not have done this. Uh, and he's of Jewish descent, I believe. Just got back from a trip to the West Bank and was like, I mean, this is disgusting. I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He put it much more diplomatically. But, and by the way, that is the West Bank. The West Bank is like the Jim Crow situation, the wall situation, the separate roads, the lack of freedom of movement. Gaza is a full administered prison, which the conditions are so vindictive and abusive that I have no doubt, and other people have said this, that the plan at some point is to just add, it'd be like, look, you want to go to a place where the employment rate isn't over 50%. We limit, you know, there isn't electricity. People are dying from heat. We, we limit uh, water, medicine, rebuilding materials. We, we bomb it, kill a massive amount of civilians every couple of months. Do you want to just take a cash transfer and self-deport yourself so we can go back and reclaim it as part of a greater Israel project? I have no doubt. So, uh, you know, crunch and look, and by the way, I mean, look, I mean, it's pretty obvious why I would mention this. She would never, ever uh, say any of this in the same way. But, you know, a lot of people, including Ayanna Presley, voted Rokana. They voted to block people's freedom of speech to exercise their right to engage in boycott, divestment, and sanctions. And the, it's a right. This is... Uh, I've played this on my show, um, and this is Nelson Mandela. This was one of his first interviews in the United States. It was at a town hall in Harlem with Ted Koppel. Here he is talking about, you know, a lot of, a lot of people who seem to know nothing about either place discount the analogies. Let's look at Nelson Mandela, who liberated South Africa. What did he think of the comparison? We identify with the PLO. Because just like ourselves, they are fighting for the right of self-determination. Wow. I, I actually thought that what Mandela said is, but when you single Israel out for criticism. But not about this economic <laughs> warfare that is manifest anti-Semitism. <laughs> it is anti-Semitism. You should do BDS for South Africa. But if you do that... Don't forget when you see the slaughter of unarmed protesters in Gaza that there were people rolling garbage cans towards Israel and those 10-year-olds were hardened Hamas operatives as human shields. You're being deliberately misleading. You're being deliberately misleading. Next week I will be on Bill Maher with Barry Weiss. <laughs> Apparently... College students can destroy free speech, but literal federal and state legislation to block a political exercise against a sovereign state. That's kosher, I guess. It's all in my new book. You're an anti-Semite and you threaten free speech. The Left Today by Nelson Mandela. Um, the so-called progressives are actually regressive. That is literally the, I think, outgoing prime minister of Israel, no doubt listening to his fail son son, <laughs> quoting Dave Rubin. <laughs> that, that is a real drop of a real thing. That, that is actually, there's a above 25% you know, <laughs> chance that that's the actual lineage of how BB got that. I have no doubt. Mouth. Dad, dad, dad. dad. The the real the the progressives are really regressives. Okay, I understand, but maybe you could stop sharing Nazi memes on Facebook. That might be helpful, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what a disgusting mess! 